Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, experience support for confident business makers. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Tom Miller. After a career of over five decades in the technology industry, Tom Miller currently works directly with the ownership of NetAtWork to assist driving the company's merger and acquisition strategy. His career began as a mainframe sales engineer for Sperry Univac, followed by a founding a computer service bureau, providing automated computer services to CPA firms, which led to opening an Apple computer store, primarily selling Great Plains software back to SMBs. This led Tom to Great Plains in 1987, followed by stints at Microsoft, Sage, and now NetAtwork. Welcome back, to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, the godfather of this podcast, <laughs> Tom Miller. <laughs> hey, yes. I tell you what, there's lots and lots and lots of great memories over that stretch of time. And thank you so much for having me again. And also, as I thought about this, you know, I, I uh, couldn't help but uh, think about your career in this business and mine and how parallel they have been. Uh, because you were a Great Plains reseller also at one point. Uh, and then uh, then you went to work for a publisher. And then we met up at Sage, you know, 10 years ago or 14 years ago, actually, when we started. And um, and and, you know, it's it's all been about uh, providing our best services that we could provide uh, to partners and helping partners be successful in what they do. And it's almost like uh, coming full circle for me, uh, because many of the partners that I talk to today about an exit strategy are the same partners that I helped recruit uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And uh, it certainly is fulfilling, as I'm sure you get a tremendous amount of fulfillment of, of seeing your lifelong friends in this business be successful. And uh, and so I'm 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 just really grateful for having that opportunity. And and what I want to share with everyone today is just a few tidbits in terms of when you're thinking about uh, selling the business. And and it's probably a very, very emotional uh, thought to have because of the endless time and effort that you put into building a business that you're proud of. And uh, there's a such a humanistic side to this uh, that that is probably as important as all of the things being considered. And uh, just basically, um, you know, when should you start thinking about this? Well, the reality is uh, all the time, right? It's like, okay, uh, many people are getting to the end of their career. They're trying to figure out what to do. Um, you know, do they do they want to sell the business and leave completely? Do they want to sell the business and stay? You know, do they have in their mind a few more years of value that they want to add uh, to their customers? And then, of course, you know, finding the right buyer and having a sync up in terms of the business values that the seller professes uh, a lot and align them with the, the buyer. Um, so it can be difficult. Uh, can be very challenging, but I think the the more you think about it and the more you take concrete steps to analyze the situation, uh, the better off um, you're going to be. And and clearly from all the transactions that I've been involved with, you know, those that take the time to really think about the future in terms of what they do after the transition is vitally, vitally important. Um so then, um, and as you and I've talked many times before, there's there's so many things to consider, but I thought I would distill it down to uh, maybe four that are really, really critical and why they're critical. Um, you know, the, the first one is, and I've, I've touched on this before, is make sure that you find someone to sell to that has the same values that you have whether they be in business or in life, that's extremely important. And, and the reason why it's important is for, um, for really the customers. And so the, you as a partner and having this business over a period of time, uh, your customers have become very close to you. And your customer is looking for a certain set of values 
in terms of who they want to do business with. And so it's 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 critically important that you find someone who reflects those values. Um, secondly, you you need to ensure because I've seen too many times where this has gone astray. You need to ensure that the buyer has the financial wherewithal to actually complete the transaction. And uh, when when you're talking about um, selling a, a customer base of of 10 to 100 or even more, um, you, you know, there there's a lot involved when it comes to the financial payouts. And, you know, your value as a seller isn't totally realized if you don't have confidence in the buyer's ability to actually pay you. And, th and that uh, is extremely important. Uh, the, the, the third, and, and this is one where uh, some people um, don't spend enough time, and that is make sure you sell to someone uh, who has a broad and deep portfolio of products and services. And, and um, experience has shown me that um, many partners have developed these great relationships with customers, but they're limited in terms of what their portfolio offering is. And so they consequently, they don't um, have the ability to maximize the technology footprint that they provide. And so um, one of the things that, that really contributes significantly to the earnout is the ability for someone to sell, you know, a broader array of technology offerings. Um, next is the um, it's it's really important that you choose someone who's got uh, a proven relationship with the technology providers. Uh, whether it be Sage or Microsoft or whoever the provider might be, uh, this is another one of those things that is critical in terms of that partner having a sustained life with your customers that they're acquiring, and uh, and that's uh, that's really really um, valuable. Okay, did it? Did I do four? I think you got all four of them in Tom. That's <laughs> and in, in, in record time. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's a really a, a truly fantastic summary of, I think, what's critically important. And, and I love how you constantly put customers first uh, as the most important thing. So uh, really appreciate that. Um, Tom, we have an exit question that we ask everyone, regardless of how many times they've been on. And that is who's a hero of yours and why are they a hero? Well, so uh, I'm sure not surprising to you, and uh, my hero is Doug Burgum. And uh, Doug is the uh, current governor of North Dakota and a candidate for uh, president of the United States. Uh, of course, I worked for him directly for several years at Great Plains. And, and he's my hero because I learned so much from him. I learned about the importance of a customer and how to treat a customer and, and think about having a customer for life. Um, I, I learned about how important it is to learn through failing. Um, I, I learned from him how important it is uh, to be curious and, and to ask a lot of questions. And, and um, probably the saying that um, has stuck with me the longest is, um, you know, back to this whole customer intimacy and understanding the customer. And, and his premise was always that if you understand the customer better than anybody else, uh, you will be wildly successful. Um, you will outpace your competition. You will provide services that customers actually want and need, and they'll be more satisfied. And the more satisfied they are, the longer they are in terms of a lifetime uh, relationship with you. Um, so, so Doug, from a business standpoint, um, had all the right things. And also from a personal standpoint, uh, just a, a, a tremendous, tremendous quality person who valued relationships immensely and, and understood, understood how important it was uh, to be honest uh, and trustworthy and, and candid with all the people he served, whether it be employees, uh, customers, vendors, uh, but more importantly, the partners that he served. 
uh, which I think contributed greatly uh, to the success of Great Plains. And lastly, Tom, we will get your, put your contact information in the show notes, but what's the best way to get hold of you? Best way, uh, mobile, 701-212-9894. You can call me direct at net at work, 203-361-9547. And finally, email tmiller at net at work, N-E-T-A-T-W-O-R-K dot com. And just one more uh, uh, plug, uh, Ed. Um, for anyone interested in seeing more in terms of content around thinking about selling your business, uh, I've got six blog posts on the Net at Work uh, uh, site. So if you just go to Net at Work and go to blog and then look for Tom Miller blogs, uh, it's, it's all things that, that I've learned uh, from doing this for so long and happy, happy, happy to share uh, with others in the hopes that it helps them. Great. We'll put those in the show notes as well. Tom Miller, thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. And thank you, Ed. And congratulations on uh, having over a thousand podcasts. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.